Today we're going to begin building our Space Invaders app. You'll be assessed on using the clock components and timers, using animation components such as image sprites in the canvas, setting visibility, and detecting collisions in App Inventor. You will program an application that has a shooter ship whose goal is to shoot all the flying saucers on the screen. Now to get started, we're going to need to download and import our Space Invaders AIA file into our MIT App Inventor account. This file can be found at the bottom of your Schoology page. The AIA file will contain all the necessary media files needed for this activity. This project introduces us to the following skills that are useful for future gaming development. Using our clock components, using the clock timer to move sprites, using sprites when dragged to move a sprite across the screen, using collision detection, as well as setting visibility of sprites. To get started, we're going to need to open our App Inventor Designer window. So you'll need to open up a new tab or window in your browser and go to your App Inventor account. Make sure you log in using your Google student email address. You'll need to click on Create Apps. You will then need to click on Projects from the top toolbar and click on the Import Project AIA from My Computer. At that time, go ahead and upload the Space Invaders AIA file you downloaded from your Schoology account. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we would create part one of our user interface in MIT App Inventor. Once you have your project uploaded into your MIT App Inventor account, we're ready to begin. Now for part one of our user interface, our main focus is going to be setting up that user interface. We'll be adding labels to our user interface at a later time. Today we're going to be adding a canvas where we can get our image sprites to move. On that canvas, we're going to go ahead and add a saucer sprite. We're going to add a rocket sprite. And then we will also go ahead and add our bullet rocket sprite as well as our bullet saucer sprite. These will be fired from both of those initial sprites that have been uploaded into our user interface. We will also need to add two clock components to tell our sprites when to move. So let's go ahead and begin by starting off with our canvas. We're gonna to need to navigate down to the drawing and animation drawer in our palette. From here, we're gonna go ahead and select our canvas and drag it onto our screen. We'll go ahead and change some of these properties, such as changing the background color from our default to black. We'll need to change the height to 400 pixels. And we'll also need to change the width to fill parent. Once you have your canvas placed, it's now time to move on to adding our sprites. And remember, we're going to be adding four different sprites to our canvas. So it's really important that as we do this, we give these sprites a correct name. So let's start off with our rocket sprite. For our rocket sprite, we're going to need to go ahead and navigate to our drawing and animation drawer, bring in an image sprite. So stay in that drawing and animation drawer. Go ahead and click on image sprite and drag that onto the screen. Make sure that it's on your canvas. From here, we're going to go ahead and rename that image sprite one to rocket sprite. Once you select OK, you should see the name change in the components window. From here, we're going to need to go ahead and change a few of these properties. The first thing we're going to do is change the picture. And we're going to go ahead and change that picture over to Rocket Sprite PNG. Here you'll see that we now have a rocket that will move about the bottom of the screen. Now that we have our image changed, it's time to go ahead and change where it should be placed. We're going to change our X value to have a value of 92. And my Y value is going to be set to 330. Once you have that place, we are now ready to move on to our next sprite. This is going to be our saucer sprite. So go ahead and bring in another image sprite towards the top of the canvas. Go ahead and rename this as saucer sprite and select OK. From our saucer sprite, we're going to need to bring in a different image. So find the saucer sprite PNG and select OK. Again, we'll need to place this in the correct location. So go ahead and change the X value from 124 in my case to 100. And the Y axis is going to be set to negative seven. This will put this somewhere up towards the top of your screen. Now we need to have those bullets that will be fired from either the saucer or from our rocket. So we're going to go ahead and stay in that drawing and animation drawer. And from here, we're going to be adding a new type of component called the ball. You're going to take your ball and drop it onto the middle of the screen. Go ahead and rename ball one as bullet rocket. Go ahead and select OK. 
From here, we're gonna go ahead and change the paint color from default to green. We'll also need to go ahead and make sure that the radius is set to five and that our X axis value is set to 107 and that the Y axis is set to 301. Now remember that this bullet will be the one being fired from our rocket. Once we have that bullet rocket in, we're gonna go ahead and go to the bullet saucer. So we'll bring in another ball and drop it on the middle of the screen. And we're gonna go ahead and rename that as well. And we're gonna go ahead and call this bullet saucer. Select okay. We'll then go ahead and change the paint color from our default to red. Once we have it changed to red, we're gonna to need to change that X value to 135 and my Y value is gonna be set to 50. This should be located directly under that saucer sprite. Once we have those sprites added, we then need to go ahead and add our clock components. We're gonna be using two different types of clocks throughout this application. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is to go to our sensors drawer. Within that sensor drawer, we're gonna go ahead and find a clock and drag it onto the screen. Remember that this is a non-visible component, so we won't actually see it on the user interface. As for our properties, we're gonna make sure that the timer always fires and timer enabled buttons are checked. We will then need to go ahead and change our time interval to 3000 milliseconds. After changing your time interval, go ahead and bring in clock two. Clock two's time intervals will be changed from 1000 to 2000 intervals. Once you have added your canvas, sprites, and clock components, you have now completed part one of our user interface. For part two, we'll look at adding a score and mislabel along with some sound effects.